Good morning, everybody. Nathan Donnelly here with Northwest Resilience. I was just out um, walking my dog and um, wearing my Filson Down Cruiser jacket, and uh, realized that it it had some. It had. I wanted to do a review of it because it's a really fantastic jacket, but it also has a few flaws that people should know about before they buy it. It's a $495 coat. So uh, at $495, you should be as near to perfect as possible. And it's got, it's, it's got for me, kind of one deal breaker and a few design issues that, uh, that, I'll, that I'll bring up. One, one materials issue as well. But um, overall, I love the GOAT. I love it quite a bit. I should mention, uh, I um, just a little bit of my background, I actually have a pro deal with Filson. Uh, I get a bit of a discount on their gear. It's why I'm able to afford quite a bit of their gear because it is very high dollar right out of the gates. Filson is high dollar stuff, period. Um, the other, so I'm a bit of a Filson fanboy. I have been for years. I coveted a lot of their stuff before I could afford it, and now I own quite a bit of, you know, pretty much everything that I that I want of their stuff. Uh, it's just a level of quality that it's really difficult to find these days. Um, but at the same time, they're an Alaskan outfitter. They get their their history comes back from the gold rush days in Alaska. That's based in Seattle. So there are some issues I have noticed not just with Filson, but really any garment designers that are designing things for extreme cold, but they're based in the lower 48 that they don't quite get. And um, this jacket has a couple of those problems with it that I'll, that I'll detail pretty soon here. Um, yeah, overall, like I said, I love this jacket. It fits me really good. I'm six foot tall and my arm span is 6'3". So I typically have problems with sleeve length uh, in shirts and jackets. And these sleeves are couldn't be better. They're just exactly right for me. Um, I think it's better to have sleeves a little bit long than a little bit too short for something like this. So if you're uh, a taller guy, this is a size large jacket. Um, and uh, fit overall is really good. Mobility is pretty decent. I guess if I do this, I can you know stretch it across the back of my shoulders, but I'm a broader shouldered guy, and that's really not a big deal for me. Um, so then the uh, the other thing, this is uh, this is made of two of their waxed cotton fabrics. So uh, I believe this is shelter cloth and cover cloth, or maybe it's the reverse of that. I can't remember which is which, but this is a lighter weight waxed, and this darker stuff is a mid weight waxed. Um, it's durable. The, the darker stuff in particular is a good dark light, um, good durable layer. Um, I find the waxing works really good. Yesterday I was pulling a neighbor out of a snow ditch with my Jeep and needing to crawl up underneath their front bumper and laying in the snow and, um, and the snow just kind of falls right off. It's, it's, it's pretty great. I've worn it in light rain once or twice, but I wouldn't want to do that for more than a few minutes. It's, it's not it's not waterproof, it's just got a water resistance to it. So, um, But it, that's all you should really need in a down garment. You're wearing this when it's below freezing, ideally. So that gets to my some of my other points. Uh, oh yeah, I was just on their website. Right now they're not selling it in this color. They're selling it in this green color. They call this otter green. This is the down cruiser vest. It's a very, it's basically a vest version of this jacket and it sidesteps some of the problems that I have with the jacket that I'm gonna get to next. But um, another really good piece. I want to say that's $295 right now um, on their website, which means uh, you're basically paying $100 a sleeve to get the jacket version uh, at $495. Um, the cuffs on the jacket, it's about, it's gotten up to a little over 20 degrees right now, but yesterday we had, um, we had temperatures down in the the teens Fahrenheit and very severe winds up to 50 mile an hour gusts with 20 or 30 mile an hour sustained winds. I was out in that for a while yesterday. The coat keeps my body warm. The problem that I had this morning while I was out walking the dog, even when it was calm though, is with these mid-weight fleece lined leather gloves on, I still needed to put my hands in my pockets. And I can't with gloves on. With 
I don't have big hands, I have kind of blocky hands for sure, but um, these are maybe a size large glove, but they might even be a broken in medium. And my hands will not go in these pockets. That's a problem. This, this has got shotgun shell pockets in the front of it, meaning this thing is meant to be you getting out there pre-dawn and waiting for the geese to come with a shotgun in your lap, and you're just sitting there shivering your butt off. Um, the insulation thickness of the jacket, depending on the weather, is good enough for that, but the hand insulation, the ability to get your hands in those pockets, isn't there. So if you're gonna buy one of these jackets for a situation like that, um, get one of those hand warmer tubes or something like that, bring mittens, but you really can't shoot a shotgun with mittens on. So um, so that's a, that's a consideration. That's my number one beef with this jacket, and it's a big one. It seems like it might be a little thing, but Cold weather gear is not just outdoor equipment, it's survival equipment. It needs to be held to a higher standard than a windbreaker you're gonna go out jogging in because this is what's keeping you alive just as a matter of course when you're going out into real cold. So if you can't do something like keep your fingers from going numb, you may have just killed yourself. It's a, it's, it's, I know I'm belaboring the point a little bit, but it's the, it's the facts of cold weather cold weather survival and gear. Um, so on that note, that's some other things that um, a jacket needs to be glove and mitten friendly, not just with the pockets, but the zipper pull here. This is a great um, brass YKK zipper. It slides very well. I've been really happy with it, but it's just a little teeny metal zipper pull. I can get it good enough with leather gloves on, but I want to be able to get it with mittens on. I want to be able to get it with numb hands. I want to be able to zip this thing up and down. Uh, so any zippers for cold weather gear should have a handhold on them. So I will personally be adding a zipper pull of parachute cord to this so that I can grab it with a, with a pair of mittens. Um, I, I should have done it already. This is my third winter with this down parka, by the way. Um, I don't believe in, review, in reviewing gear that I only just received. I, I don't even... Re, I don't even believe in reviewing gear that I haven't like started to wear out. It needs to be tested in the conditions it's designed and advertised for. Um, and that goes especially with cold, cold, cold weather gear. Uh, as an example, these, these, these are a pair of Miklagard wool pants made and designed in Sweden. They're fleece, they're, they're felt lined, or excuse me, they are quilt lined and this is the nicest, I believe this is going to be the nicest wool garment I've ever owned, period. Not just pants, but anything. Um, they're amazing, as far as I can tell so far. I've only had them for two or three months, and I haven't had them in a lot of severe cold weather yet. So they, uh, there's some stuff I'm going to do before I do a review, probably at the end of this winter, on these pants. Uh, same thing with this vest. I'll do a review on this Filson Down Cruiser vest next. So look for that if you're interested in the vest. But um, we've, I'm, a, I'm a reluctant gear reviewer. I, I worked in the outdoor industry for years. I gear tested for outdoor research and for Heli Hansen and some others. Uh, and I, I have a background in uh, alpine mountaineering and as an outdoor survival instructor. So um, I, I live in a fairly temperate climate now, but I have spent a fair amount of time in severe cold conditions. So uh, I like to think I know what I'm talking about in regards to that. Um, so back to some other things. There was another issue that I have noticed with other, um, again, I have to take my gloves off to really operate the zipper well. The collar on this jacket, in the winter time or in any cold weather, I tend to have a neck gaiter on or a scarf or at least a jacket or a, a shirt with a collar or two, uh, maybe two shirts. At any rate, this area in cold weather we tend to bulk up with layers. And I think that any jacket that's being meant to wear in cold weather, with layers, cold weather, should go over those layers. And this one here, I can make it happen, but I have to really mess with it. If my hands, I mean, my hands have been out of my gloves now for over a minute. In cold weather, they're gonna start stinging. So I can just barely get that and I'm kinda choked by it. So. That's not acceptable to me. I want to be able to get this, in particular, this corner 
right here, that kind of inside there, this needs to be out wider. Um, the top is probably fine, but this is where things bulk up, right underneath the Adam's apple on a man. Uh, that needs to have more room. This is kind of a flagship piece for, for Filson. They've been making this for a lot of years, and these issues should have been worked out. I actually do like some other things about this pocket, like the way the seam comes up and then curves up about an inch, inch and a quarter there. That keeps things like my lens cap from falling out of this pocket but it needs to go up taller so that you can get a gloved hand in there. Uh, another point, another thing about this pocket, it's lined with a brushed cotton. The newer ones, this is actually lined with merino wool. The collar is merino wool too. I don't believe this is merino wool. It feels a little itchy. And I read in some of the reviews, some people don't like this. I happen to like this collar for that, not the fit so much. Um, and I think it's fine, but the newer ones are merino wool. Um, the other thing about these pockets is they've got this kind of, it's a cool idea, these expanding pockets for shot shells, um, but they, they, so they snap here on the corners, I'm sure you can probably see that. The snaps though, while it's a neat idea, they don't quite get the job done, and I find I'm looking down all the time and those snaps are undone and the pillows, the, the uh, pockets kind of billowed out, um, so that's, that should be an improvement. Another problem um, pertaining to cold weather, the drawstring, there's a, there's a drawstring that goes through and you can access it from the right or left side. It's a wax cotton um, kind of drawstring. Fairly easy to grab, well, if, if I tie knots in it, it's fairly easy to grab a hold of, I guess. Um, but they use uh, these leather buttons as the slider. And those leather buttons don't do a darn thing for holding a uh, drawstring that's not elastic. This is not an elastic drawstring. What I would like to see is an actual spring-loaded toggle on an elastic drawstring so that when I'm bending over and doing something and my waistline is expanding or I've, you know, having to reach up and pull my knife out or whatever, that that goes back into place so I don't have cold air blowing up here. I'm about 215, 220 pounds right now and I'm filling out this jacket pretty well at the moment, but when I bought it, I was only 175 pounds. I had just come off of the Alone Show and lost a lot of weight. So this thing fit me a little bit more like a bell at the time. And, um, and if I'm not able to seal that up, I got cold air coming up through a really, the biggest hole in the jacket, right? So drawstring, I will probably switch this out myself and put elastic in it, uh, and then I will add a zipper tie or a, a zipper pull to the zipper here. Um, the cuffs, I really like the cuffs. They are, uh, they've got that kind of gasket on the inside, which is comfortable. And then this extra layer over the top there, which keeps um, wet snow and stuff from getting to that cuff and soaking it. Things just kind of fall off. They're not so bulky that I can't put a, um, like a big gauntlet mitten over the top of it, but they come to the, the right size that, you know, they work well with my my gloves on inside. A lot of the times it's another th issue with uh, cold weather gear is the the wrist management. So cold weather gear it's often the openings aren't designed for cold weather and when I'm really bulked up like when I was on the alone show I had on all my layers at once. That was two base layers, two sweaters, um, a hoodie and my parka and all those layers you know, starting at my elbow and wrist, I've got these big gorilla arms that are already kind of big. Um, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't make the wrist gasket work without messing with it quite a bit. Um, and again, these things are what's keeping you alive when it's really cold. You need to be able to keep your hands warm. So having to take a glove off and fuss with things like that can mean the difference between having hands that are fine and hands that are numb. So, um, Overall, I really like how it fits. Uh, I like the colors it comes in. I like how it looks. You can see how far up the, the uh, cloth comes up in the back here. I get compliments on this jacket. I do like it overall, but um, if I'm paying $495, it's gotta be perfect. Uh, another thing that I really, overall the materials in this thing are pretty excellent with one exception. It's a down coat. Again, an expensive down coat. 
and I was unable to find what fill weight of down they used on their website or on the label. Um, it is a uh, ethically harvested down, which is great. You're able to actually track where the down comes from. These jackets are made in Canada, which I think is great. Can Canadian border is only about 15 miles from here, so I feel like I'm actually closer to Canada than I am to Seattle here. Um, but the down is 75% down and 25% feathers. It is gray goose down, so it's good goose down. But um, that tells me that it's probably not even a 600 fill down. A $500 jacket needs to be 800 or 900 fill down uh, in order to be worth its metal as far as I'm concerned. So um, it is a work coat, but you're not paying $500 for a work coat. So I think it should have, I should think it should have legit good down in it. That would, uh, that would, that would be just a, a baseline for me. Um, so overall, like I said, I do like the jacket. Um, I'm glad I own the jacket. Would I use it for its intended and advertised purpose? Not without making some exceptions for it. I would have to figure out another way to keep my hands warm. And, um, and Filson needs to fix that. Filson needs to fix that design. The, the jacket has been around long enough that they should have corrected that by now. And um, somebody needs to get back to the drawing table on this thing and correct those things. Overall, though, I love putting this thing on. I love wearing it at, at uh, primitive skills gatherings when it's cold. And um, it's nice if I'm sitting in my Jeep and just getting in and out and using my arms and stuff, a good barn jacket, all that stuff. But if you've got to sit out in the cold for a long while, it's a problem. And uh, that's unfortunate. So I uh, hope you liked the review. Let me know if you have any other questions, anything I didn't cover. Um, just put it in the comments. And I'm... I'm trying to be better about uh, getting back to comments. I'll do a review on this vest. I'll do a review on this hat too. This is my second one of these. This is a Filson hat. Um, and uh, I feel like I've, I've put enough miles on both of those to have a really good opinion of them. Uh, both, by the way, I like quite a bit. Um, and um, yeah, I hope you all had a Merry Christmas and uh, be useful. <laughs>